do begin with a big achievement for a local athlete. This morning, Tico native Susanna Scaroni won the women's wheelchair race at the Boston Marathon. Take a look. In total control as she wins her first Boston Marathon. Wow, oh wow. This is the first win in Boston for Scaroni. She had finished second twice before, including last year's race. Scaroni crossed the finish line with a time of one hour, 41 minutes and 45 seconds, which is a full five minutes before her next closest competitor. Scaroni is also the reigning Bloomsday champion. We're still waiting to hear if she will be returning to Spokane this year to defend her title and participate in the race here in just a few weeks. In other news happening right now, Idaho Governor Brad Little is in North Idaho to talk about the state's legislative session. One of the areas the governor is wanting to focus his attention right now is increased funding for education. We are in the bottom 10% for starting teacher pay. Uh, with what the legislature adopted this year, my proposal will be close to the top 10. But we're still, you know, one of the highest paid states is Washington. So here in Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls, uh, it's still the, the pay, but it's much, much closer than it's ever been before. Creme 2 Shannon Mowdy is with the governor right now. She'll be asking him about some of the more controversial bills also passed this session, including further limiting abortion access. You can hear what the governor has to say coming up tonight on Creme 2 News at 4 o'clock. We want to turn our attention to weather though right now and the talk of snow in the forecast, which is hard to believe considering this is the first real sunshine that we saw today in several days. It was pretty nice. It doesn't feel like there's snow, but Thomas, you're saying there's a chance? There is a chance, but it is only talk. I don't think that the snow that we are expecting for tonight is going to stick around for very long because a day like this, sunshine, temperatures in the mid 40s right now, We'll get that tomorrow as well. So any snowflakes that fall through the overnight hours, they have no chance of staying around. They might stick to the grass or the patio furniture or outdoor set here, but nothing more than that. So this is shaping up to be a beautiful day. That sunshine is really warm, shining on my uh, right ear right here. And you can tell, look at all the clearing that is uh, right here for the Inland Northwest. This was yesterday's rainfall, and here comes the incoming rain and maybe even snow simply because when this arrives, it's going to be nighttime. Temperatures will be falling. It'll be the coldest point of the day, and it will be cold enough to snow, but nothing more than that. So when we look at the hour by hour forecast, look what happens. Temperatures, of course, going to drop at night. We get to about 11 at midnight. There's rain and 38 if it gets colder than that, which it will. That rain will change to snow but it will be wet. It won't stick around for very long. It's just talk and nothing more. But beyond that, we do have a handful of warmer days ahead and we'll cover that in just a couple minutes. All right, looking forward to it, Thomas. Thank you. Happening now at noon, police are asking for help to find two missing kids in Whitman County. One is 12, the other only seven years old. These two have not been seen since they went to bed on a Saturday night. So take a look. This is a photo of those two missing kids. Although police have not shared their names, the Whitman County Sheriff says the family had just relocated to Palouse within the last two weeks and that the children still have strong ties to family and friends in the Seattle area. Right now, authorities believe the two may have either run away or were were taken by relatives back to Western Washington, but the Whitman County Sheriff says they are concerned about the kids safety because their location is unknown. So if you have any information, you're asked to please contact the police, the Palouse Police Department or the Whitman County Sheriff's Office. Those numbers both right there on your screen. New at noon today, police have arrested the man suspected of killing an Eastern Oregon Reserve police officer. He is 36 year old Renee Castro. Investigators say he shot and killed Officer Joseph Johnson on Saturday night in Nyssa, which is a small city along the border with Idaho. The officer responded to a call about a violent person and was told the man had just left in a vehicle. After a short pursuit, the suspect pulled over and then started shooting, killing that officer. Officer Johnson is survived by his wife and two children. Here in Spokane, the future of the Cannon Street Homeless Shelter is on the City Council agenda for tonight. Council will be talking about using the space as a different type of shelter moving forward. Nicole Hernandez is outside City Hall now with more. So right now the Cannon Street Shelter is a drop in shelter for people experiencing homelessness. But tonight here at City Hall, Spokane City Council will be talking about turning the Cannon Street Shelter into a homeless respite facility instead. A respite facility is basically a place where people who are unhoused and have health problems can go for shelter. 
Right now, a lot of those people are either in hospitals or in the homeless encampment along I-90. The city says creating a respite facility will help clear needed space in hospitals and be a good next step to clearing Camp Hope. As of now, the Cannon Street Shelter contract is going to be up at the end of May. The city is already struggling to pay for both the Cannon Street and Trent shelters right now. That's because the new Trent shelter contract is costing more than the original one. So the council is talking about switching the Cannon Street shelter to this respite facility, which could free up some funds to help pay for the Trent shelter. The city says Medicaid dollars could potentially help pay for the new respite care. If the city council does decide to vote and approve this change for the Cannon Street Shelter, they say the respite facility could open up as soon as June of this year. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crump 2 News. The Grant County Sheriff's Office is investigating a deadly crash from over the weekend as a criminal incident. Two people did die in that crash, which happened near Efreda. It happened on Saturday morning at Sagebrush Flats Road and Johnson Road. Officials say a driver in a Volkswagen Jetta ran a stop sign and was then hit by a person driving a Chevy Silverado. Both vehicles rolled down an embankment. One of them hit a utility pole, knocking it and the power lines down. Deputies believe the 18-year-old driver of the Jetta may have been intoxicated at the time of the crash. The sheriff's office identified the passengers who died as a 23-year-old Spokane man and an 18-year-old Efreda woman. The sheriff's office says four other people also had to be taken to nearby hospitals.